when you bring people out here, that's when you get the, what, I had no idea, this is, I didn't even know this existed, like that, I mean, we, we gen, like we get that from all of our customers that are, you know, coming from the East Coast, uh, West Coast. They just don't understand it until they're here. These landscapes are amazing. You get a whole new sense of space and vastness. This central grassland system is 600 million acres. It is one massive system, and unfortunately, it's one of the most threatened and least protected ecosystems. So the fact that we're here in these grasslands, that we're focusing on halting and then reversing the degradation and the plow print that's been changing and taking the system out of grass is so important, especially right now. Native grasses are, are critically important for our, you know, our grassland bird species. It's the fastest declining guild of birds right now in North America. Oh, here's a burrowing owl. These native grasslands have evolved with, with disturbance, fire, drought, grazing. Red meat kind of gets a bad rap, uh, but really at the end of the day, those animals, whether they're bison or domestic livestock, that disturbance that they create, it stimulates the grass growth and it also creates different heights of the vegetation. And that different height across the landscape is really what these grassland birds cue in on and require to fulfill their life cycle. I always like to explain to our grassland ecosystem as our rainforest underground. The importance of the soil and the root structure and everything that goes on underground in the grassland ecosystem is a rainforest. And that's the way we need to start thinking about it. The system needs some amount of larger before grazing to be healthy. By being out here, these cows are sustaining all these other ecosystem services that these landscapes provide. Native grass biodiversity, carbon storage, water quality and quantity storage. All that stuff's happening because these cattle are here allowing folks to keep this landscape open and keep it from being converted to something else. This is our invasive. And this is our native species that's still green. So you gotta be able to make it profitable on the ranching side and still be attractive for the next generation to come back and, and work on the conservation. Because if I do all this work, but nobody wants to take it over, in the end, really what value was it? Ranchers are critical to grasslands conservation in North America. Over 80% um, of the Great, Great Plains, depending on what state you're in, is in private ownership. And so their ability to maintain economic viability in this landscape is really critical. I've been doing this 14 years and there's definitely a level of spirituality every time you come out around them and it never goes away. We're just out here in the middle of our family's buffalo herd uh, here on the Cheyenne River Buffalo Ranch. These are fully intact families, so I mean there's everything from calves to yearlings to two-year-olds to mature cows to mature bulls. Audubon Conservation Ranching Program works with producers like the Cheyenne River Ranch here to work on management so we can look at how do we manage these properties to improve the soils, to improve wildlife habitat, having positive impacts on the health of the range vegetation and having positive impacts on the birds. You know, bison restoration is something that many tribes are interested in and focused on and with funding from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, you know, tribes were able to start working on projects um, that were important to them, but also important to you know, grassland restoration or, or wildlife conservation. Through that capacity building within programs, tribes were then better able to access other sources of funding, like government funding. At the Bezos Earth Fund, we focus in the landscapes where locally-led action can drive globally significant outcomes, both for climate change through carbon uh, sequestration and for nature production and restoration. That was a very easy choice in a lot of ways for us to come here in the grasslands where we've partnered with NIFWF for three years now, from ranchers, from indigenous-led organizations, and just from private landowners who are all coming together around this shared goal of protecting and stewarding and restoring these precious grassland landscapes. Yeah.